Hello, welcome to this special episode brought to you by Wave Media. I'm Chris. Today, I'm going to have an interesting conversation with an old friend of China's, a former Ghanaian ambassador to China, and currently the president of Ghana China Friendship Association, His Excellency Kojo Amu Gottfried. So, without further ado, let's get it started. Your Excellency, I read from one web page that you were in China in 1959 uh, when、sure. you were part of the Western African Student Union. That's correct.、Yes. Right, and also you came to China in 1961. In 1961, was a very interesting thing happening. That was when our first president, President Kwame Nkrumah, came to、uh, the Treaty of Friendship was、mm-hmm. in that year. So I participated in it, but. I was not part of the delegation of the president Kwame Nkrumah. I was、mm. on a different assignment. I was going to Vietnam to、mm. see Ho to see Ho Chi Minh, and that's、uh, so. They said, "Why don't you stay with us for a bit too?" And so it was a, a great、uh, event when、uh, Sho and Lai played their table tennis with、uh, President Nkrumah. So you were the sort of. You witnessed those figures, those、um, uh, prominent figures on the global stage. That was so long ago, yet their name resonates till this day. We want to go back to the beginning,、um, sure. to when Ghana first became independent, and when the nationalist movement and the leaders like、um, Nkrumah became pre- first、um, president. How was Ghana like in those years? What was、uh, how did Ghana and China become friends with each other? Yes, Ghana. I, I think Nkrumah was、uh, a good friend of、uh, China. But I maybe if I go a little further, when、uh, the Red Army moved into China in 1949, I was just a young boy、uh, in boarding school, and that was a phenomenal、uh, experience for us to hear of this kind of. The Red Army march, marching into China,、uh, Beijing in 1949, and it was also the same time when President Kwame Nkrumah did the positive action for which he was arrested in his、uh, campaign for Ghana's、mm. independence.、So、I find those things very significant for、mm. my own political、uh, upliftment and understanding. Yeah, it happened that、uh, for me because my older brother. Was a personal assistant of Kwame Nkrumah. This was、uh, the basis on which, even though we may have been thought of as being a bourgeois family, which、uh, was a contradiction, you know, in that. Right, right. He was he was arrested by the colonial government. There was a lot of people protesting right in front of the prison, and he got elected in the prison. That was a miracle. And were you were you part of the protest movement? Oh, yeah, sure. As I say, my brother was also in prison. It's a, yeah.、Oh, wow. Okay. Him and the、uh, when they came out, they established something which was quite unique. I think people don't talk too much about it. They were known as PG, I mean prison <laughs> graduates. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. In China, we call that long long chang wu dao. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like. Okay, you、um, start. I mean,、uh, there's mental clarity. You start to think about the big things. When Ghana became a republic in 1960s, in 1960. So after that, that was a period of, relatively speaking, a period of honeymoon with、uh, both camps, with the capitalist camp and also the socialist camp. Everybody wants to, because it's, it's the first. African, you know, sub- sub-Saharan African nation to achieve sovereignty and independence. So everybody was、uh, a friend of Ghana's.、Um, and how did Ghana move forward, and why Ghana、uh, became friends with、uh, the socialist camp with China? Because I think Kwame Nkrumah realized the socialist countries、uh, supported us during our independence、uh, campaign. There was an element that. Here we are taking power, and these people have been supporting us、uh, all the way. And as I say, in 1961, in which they also established the 
Ghana China Friendship Society, it tells you the story uh, of you know how he felt. When we came to China in 1959, which was the anniversary that of the Red Army marching into Beijing, and they treated us very well, and we saw a lot of things. But also, some of the things I recollect is at that time, what China was, uh, if uh, they said somebody was rich, he owned uh, a bicycle. That was the rich man. And that was quite fascinating for us to, you know, see that, oh, China as it was. That had a deep impression on me as a, someone growing up that this is a country which we've heard of. And the factor, as I said before, is the, the march into Beijing, the uh, Mao Zedong's uh, great march we came in, was a fascinating thing for all of us. And it, for me, it's lasted throughout my life that this phenomenon you know, inspires some of us to really become internationalists rather than even concentrating only on our own uh, country. But of course, it helped us in the development of our struggle for you know, independence, for our struggle for internationalism, and a whole lot of things, which will develop into something else later. The association which I was linked with was called the West African Students' Union. And the West African Students' Union has had a very long period of uh, struggle. And many of our political leaders, including Kwame Nkrumah, passed through this uh, place. I mean, I think he was General Secretary of West African Students' Union. I became General Secretary of West African Students in 1959. And that was the reason why the Chinese invited us and I had the opportunity as uh, my first uh, visit to China. What I saw of China then was, as I said, that uh, somebody on the bicycle was seen as a rich man mm. uh, at that time. And to, for me to see from that level to much later what China had become. And for me also actually working, being ambassador in China uh, was uh, for me interesting. Furthermore, because of working in the West African Students' Union as the uh, general secretary, I attended many conferences like the IUS conference, International Students' Union conference. And one of my great friends at that time representing China was Ho Chi Li. Ho Chi Li and I remained very good friends. Uh, so even when I was in China, he was then a minister and I used to see him. So that's right. the background of it. So when I came to China, uh, okay, 1961, as I mentioned, I was on my way to Vietnam to see Ho Chi Minh. That was a lot of other students also were uh, going. And that's when I got to China and Krumah, our first president, had come on his first visit. So they said, why don't you join us, wait for us before you go on your assignment? So that's what I did and experienced a little bit more of how China uh, was going to uh, come up. Wow. Wow. Okay. That was an interesting story. And also, there was a very interesting episode in Ghana and China relation, the history. In 1964, uh, Premier Zhou Enlai uh, visited a number of sure. African countries, and Ghana was one of them. And that was uh, a very, uh, how should I put it, special timing in Nkrumah's government, because uh, that was, he, yeah. It was a it was a failed assassination attempt, and it was wounded, right? Mm -hmm. And Premier Zhou, some people suggested to Premier Zhou, let's just keep Ghana, uh, and he, he insisted, no, we must show support uh, to mm -hmm. our friend. So he went anyway. Were you there in Ghana? Yeah, I was, I was there in Ghana when Premier Zhou and I mm -hmm. uh, came to visit Ghana. Yeah. How did the public, uh, the, the Ghanaian public, react to? that event. Was it a well-known event? I believe so. Right? It was a very well-known event. You know, I met Premier Chun Lai 
1961, when he was playing, he played table tennis with Nkrumah in Beijing. And uh, it was very well received uh, visit. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, it, it's 1966 that uh, you had the coup d'etat. Yeah, yeah. I'm also curious about your later experience. When did you become ambassador to China? From which year to which year? I think no, <laughs> in 82. In an, okay, in the 80s. Okay, so that was after about 20, 20 odd years since you first came to China. So uh, how, how China has changed during that two decades? Oh, quite a lot. I remember visiting uh, Shenyang. And yeah, mm. it was a small fishing village. Mm. Now it's a replica of Hong Kong. How would the local people s see the Chinese? I mean, are they affected by those all those negativity in Western press about so-called neocolonialism that China is committing in Africa? Were they affected? From the ordinary person, I can't see any reaction. That, that they know the Chinese and so on. It's like also the African being in China. I remember I had a, a young man, you no, know, very interesting young boy, who he went to China in his own regard. And then uh, he learned Chinese from the markets. He didn't learn it from school, but he could speak Chinese. The Chinese were fascinated by him. So every time my friends would say, where's well, the young Ghanaian who was staying with you and spoke Chinese? I'm sure that the Chinese will probably be able to learn the African language or the Ghanaian, but there are many African languages, you know, learn the Ghanaian language. It's yeah, not been so I, I, I see if I can learn some Arkan language if I go to Ghana. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. You can. Uh, the person will say, meet you and say, what would you say? That means, how are you? you know. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you were speaking Chinese. <laughs> it sounds similar. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. I, I think that's uh, that's about all of today's interview. I mean, I uh, would I really appreciate your time, sir. I mean, you, you woke up so early in the morning. Thank you, really. And I, I wish we can continue this kind of conversation in the future uh, to, to foster the, the greater bond between two peoples. I thank you also very much for uh, having me and ex making this exchange, which I think will continue and be improved to see what the developments have been since we talked. Yeah. Maybe yeah. 10 years later, when I'm 100 years. You Look can forward to that. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so All right. Thanks a lot. And have a good day. My salute. My salute. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.